In 1995, 20-year-old Stephen Playdall met 15-year-old Alyssa Garcia online. At the time of their encounter, the young people were separated by almost 3,000 kilometers. Alyssa lived in San Antonio, Texas, while Stephen resided in New York. Their phone communication quickly developed into something more significant, and Stephen bought a plane ticket to visit Alyssa in San Antonio. Alyssa's parents did not approve of Stephen. They even insisted on her marrying him but she was not in love. At 16, she became pregnant, and in November 1998, she gave birth to a daughter, whom she named Denise. According to Alyssa, Stephen's behavior changed dramatically after the birth of their daughter. He began to pressure her in various ways and was also cruel to their newborn. He neglected their cats to the point that they could barely breathe. He rarely spoke to his family and became increasingly isolated, having no friends. Stephen owned many weapons at home and struggled to keep a job. He was capable of harming Denise. Her body was often covered in bruises. Alyssa thought several times that she might never see Denise again. However, she continued to live with Stephen, and eventually the couple got married. When Denise was eight months old, Alyssa and Stephen decided to give her up for adoption. They believed it was best for their daughter to have a chance at a normal life, as they felt they were unable to provide that for her. Later, it became known that Alyssa made this decision largely due to Stephen's violence. Denise was adopted by Anthony and Kelly Fusca and was given a new name, Katie. The family took her to the Dutchess County area of New York, where she began her new life. Katie was a normal child. She loved animals, was a vegetarian, and was a creative person who enjoyed drawing comics. She was also socially active and had many friends. In high school, Katie planned to attend university to specialize in digital advertising. However, her beautiful dreams were shattered when she felt an overwhelming desire to meet her biological parents. Katie knew from a young age that she was adopted and her adoptive family, the Fuscas, did not hide this fact. As a result, she began searching for her biological parents on social media, and in 2016, at the age of 18, she succeeded. After graduating from high school, Katie started communicating with her biological mother, Alyssa. At that time, Alyssa was 37 and Stephen was 42. Katie had decided to defer her college enrollment for a year and wanted to live with her biological parents. Although her adoptive parents were hesitant about her missing a year of school and living with people they barely knew, they ultimately felt they could not stop her since she was a teenager. In August 2016, Katie packed her belongings and moved in with Alyssa and Stephen. At that time, Stephen and Alyssa were still married and had two daughters together. After 10 years of giving Katie up for adoption, the couple had decided to become parents again, having two daughters with a five-year gap between them. However, when Katie moved in with Alyssa and Stephen, the family dynamic did not appear to be that of a happy married couple, if they had ever been truly happy. They often argued and slept in separate rooms, already contemplating divorce. Alyssa described Stephen as frequently angry. He would break furniture and humiliate her in front of their daughters. When Katie moved into their home, Alyssa told the girls about Stephen's behavior, such as how he would often leave things in disarray, including the refrigerator. However, Katie seemed oblivious to the tension and appeared as if she had nothing to do with the family's issues. At the time of Katie's arrival, Stephen had not worked for several years. He stayed home to care for the children while Alyssa worked full-time to provide for the family. According to Alyssa, Stephen's behavior changed drastically after Katie joined them. He began to pay more attention to his appearance, changing his hairstyle and beard, and even started exercising. Six weeks after Katie's arrival, a strange incident occurred. 
One night, Alyssa noticed that Stephen was sleeping on the floor in Katie's room. Initially, she was silent about it, but when Stephen repeated this behavior, it sparked a conflict between them. When Alyssa confronted him, Stephen claimed that he wanted to spend more time with his eldest daughter and that they were bonding well. In November 2016, Alyssa planned to move to a new house with her daughters and Katie. To her surprise, Katie said she was still living with Stephen. At that time, Alyssa had no idea that a disturbing and inappropriate romance was unfolding behind her back. It wasn't until seven months after the divorce that Alyssa discovered the truth. Stephen had instructed their daughters not to treat Katie as a sister, but to call her mom or mother. She found this out from her younger daughter's journal. In it, she also learned that Katie was pregnant by Stephen. At that moment, Alyssa realized what had been happening behind her back all along. One day her younger daughter witnessed Stephen and Katie kissing and wrote in her journal, Katie is pregnant. Dad says they feel like a couple. They looked too pale at night. My dad, yikes. In the journal, the girl even drew her dad as a figure resembling Satan, expressing her fear that Stephen and Katie would give birth to a demonic child. Alyssa immediately called Stephen, and he nonchalantly replied, I thought you knew. We are in love with each other. Each of them started to lead separate lives. Katie returned to her adoptive family in New York, who supported her despite everything. In their home, Katie decided that she wanted to move on and would never be with Stephen again. She was determined to finish her education, find a job, and eventually look for her son. Despite police warnings against contacting Stephen, Katie decided to call him to inform him of her intentions regarding the divorce. When Stephen heard her words, he felt an overwhelming anger. He first called his mother, expressing a desire to spend time with his son, Bennett, and to bring him to his home. While his mother was not opposed to this, she noticed Stephen's increasingly nervous behavior. He explained it away, claiming that Katie wanted to get rid of him. After Katie handed Bennett over to Stephen, she was unaware that in just a few hours he would do something terrible. After spending a couple of hours with his son at home, Stephen lost control and left Bennett in a closet, depriving him of oxygen. In a moment of unthinkable behavior, Stephen got into his car and drove from North Carolina to New York. He knew that Katie and her stepdad, Tony, visited her grandmother every weekend. The elderly woman adored her stepdaughter and eagerly awaited their visits. After spending a few hours with her grandmother, Katie, Tony, and their daughter headed back to their car. However, as they were leaving, they noticed a car approaching. Behind the wheel was Stephen, brandishing a weapon, in a matter of moments, he fired several shots, almost instantly ending their lives. Later, Stephen called his mother and said, I just killed my baby and I'm at the house. Okay, you said that he told you he killed his baby. All right, ma'am, listen to me. What's your name? Now please tell me exactly what happened. He's not home. His wife spoke to him over the phone yesterday and he told me she was in New York. He said he was on his way there and that he would bring the baby to her. Then he said he was coming back. And then, he just killed her. He killed baby. I can't even believe this is happening. The police immediately went to Stephen's house, where they discovered the lifeless body of Bennett in the closet. After receiving the call from his mother, Stephen fled the scene. He drove a few kilometers before stopping on the side of the road, where he took his own life. A 
According to Stephen Pladall's former lawyer who had spoken to him a month prior, there were no indications that Stephen was capable of such a horrific act. The lawyer expressed shock that no one could have predicted these devastating consequences. We may never fully understand what was going through Stephen's mind or what his motives were, but we do know that his actions destroyed many lives. This case also brought attention to the term genetic sexual attraction, which refers to a strong attraction that can arise between two relatives who have never met. While there is no concrete evidence to support this theory, it remains more speculative than scientific. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this topic interesting. If so, please leave a comment so we can discuss all the details further.